Greenville, New York had always been a sleepy place. Nothing ever really happened there, with the exception of the carnival that came through every August. This year, it had been pushed back to September, considering the weather had been... strange. Aside from the movie theater in Brom Park, if you wanted to call a couple of trees and a duck pond a park, there wasn't much to do other than wander the streets and haunt alleyways with the local riffraff. If there was anything Greenville was notorious for, it was its riffraff. Small-time drugs and big-time trouble were in no short supply at Greenville High, which was basically what most of the kids were half the time. This year, as summer came to a close, the entering freshmen were subjected to a full day of classes, while those lucky enough to be upperclassmen were granted a peace offering of only a half day. Of course, nobody was happy about any day's worth of sitting in a hot, stuffy classroom, but as of 9.30 that morning, the majority of the high school population was currently being deprived of their freedom in favor of dark, under-air-conditioned classes. Gathering his books from a small silver locker, a young man with dark hair, matching eyes, and an exhausted expression made his way down the long, suffocating halls toward his first class of a four-period day that to him already felt like a lifetime. Dressed in neatly kept jeans, a white shirt, and a black vest with multicolored spots, he looked older than the general sophomore. Ignoring the conundrum of rhetoric he already received from a pack of freshly graduated middle schoolers, he hurried off to his first class and managed to take a seat about three minutes before the bell rang. At the other end of the hall, a young girl stood nervously. Glancing through the sea of people, she looked as if she were ready to have a panic attack. Relax, a voice called from her side as blue eyes met green. Easy for you to say, this place is overwhelming. Yeah, Rain, it's public school. Feeling overwhelmed is a given. Adorning pale skin and a multitude of freckles, Leah regarded her friend with exasperation. She couldn't blame her. Not really. Rain had just come to Greenville from Japan in a school that considered corporal punishment a god-given right. She had arrived a paranoid, violent mess, and it had taken weeks to persuade Leah's parents to let her stay with them. Rain needed help, and Leah knew that getting her to adjust would be part of the process. Come on, she said as she slung an arm over her paler friend's shoulder and all but shoved her into her next class. The bell chimed upon their arrival, and Rain took a seat in the back, while the boy who had entered before her gave a smile and the teacher passed out the attendance sheet. Rain didn't smile back. Everything about her gave off the impression she wanted to be left alone. Peering at the sheet, she read off the names in her head before signing her own. Rain Chardet. Suddenly, a loud bang ushered from the left side of the room as the door was thrown open and a boy with bleached blonde hair stuffed beneath a black beanie sauntered in. Dark eyes scanned the class and he took a seat directly in front of the boy with the vest. His own attire left much to be desired. A pair of tatty denims and a black shirt with a happy face that sported a bullet hole through its head. Ignoring the look he received as the door rebounded off the wall, he wrapped an arm across his chair while Rain's grip instinctively tightened around her pen. If you'd all pass up the attendance sheet when you're done with it, the teacher announced. Class will be starting in a few minutes. Fun, 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 the boy with the hat muttered, scribbling his name before tossing the paper behind him. Do you think you can hand that to me next time? Fuck off. Shaking his head, the dark-haired boy began to print his name, only to look up as the intercom went off. Samuel Hain, please report to the principal's office this instant. Letting his pen slide, he gave a low groan, and the boy in front of him began to laugh. Okay, Cunningham, pay up. You owe me ten big ones. Five minutes, he stared at the clock, which now read 9.55. He couldn't have waited five minutes? It ain't ten o'clock yet, buddy. Pay up. Reaching for his wallet, he pulled out ten dollars and gave the blonde in front of him a glare. This is my lunch money, you know. Shouldn't be making bets you can't afford, he said as he snatched it from his hand. Matt, Rorick, unless you want to be joining Sam in that office, so stop bickering and do your work. Yeah, yeah, whatever, Rorick muttered while Matt began to shake his head. The class fell silent shortly after, though every now and again when the teacher wasn't looking, Rorick would turn and throw a piece of crumpled paper in Matt's direction. Do you have to be such a delinquent? By the time the bell went off, Matt was up to his ankles in paper balls while Rorick was almost out of a whole notebook. The moment the alarm sounded, he rushed through the door so fast that once the teacher noticed, it was too late. Gathering his things, Matt began to pick up the papers and place them into a small trash bin as the room emptied. Having neatly copied two pages, Rain thought it odd she didn't already have an entire book full when Leah poked her head into the class. So, how'd it go? Overwhelming. It happens. Don't worry, you'll like art. The teacher is totally lax. Do I really have to paint? Doodle, Leah offered as they stepped into the room. Large and fairly wide, the art department was well established. Several students had already begun to take their seats while the teacher explained to the incoming freshmen a variety of shading techniques. Rorick, of course, wasn't paying attention as he walked in and ghosted toward the supply cabinet to fiddle with the lock. It didn't take long to crack. Shuffling it aside, he rummaged through shelves comprised of paints and glues, many of which were considered toxic. Loading several into the pockets of his oversized jeans, he carefully placed the lock back on the cabinet door when no one was looking. 
Isn't that against the rules? Ren asked Leo. Yeah. You'd think he looked any more suspicious. Clapping the door back into place, Rourke took a seat. Getting high on glue much? Leo asked with a snort. Ah, you're so funny, he mimicked her and spent the rest of the period with his hat pulled over his face. Watching in disgust, Ren wondered aloud if she'd made a mistake in coming here. He's just another future tweaker. Pay him no mind. You see those kinds of kids around here everywhere. Leah's words were true enough, as Greenville was notorious for drugs, not to mention kids like Warwick, who took a liking and a profession to peddling them. Why does this seem so much more complicated than the movies? Rain asked once the period had ended and they walked back downstairs. Because no one with half a brain would ever set foot here? The conversation ceased when they reached the double doors of the locker room, which led to an enormous gymnasium bustling with students. Gym is mandatory? Rain looked as if she'd rather be hung. Yeah, and remember, we can't show off. You're the star of the soccer team? By accident? No, but come on, don't overdo it. Brushing past them, a boy in dark jeans and a disturbed t-shirt nearly knocked them both to the floor. Brandishing a black beanie in a similar fashion to Rorick's, he too had stark blonde hair, though his eyes were a dull, pale blue, and instead of a solid color, his hat bore the Chinese character for fear. The overpowering stench of marijuana lingered in his wake as he stalked over, plopped down, and kicked Matt's stuff to the floor. First day and this shit sucks already. Rolling his eyes, Matt reached out to pick up his books. You're telling me you already cost me ten dollars, he said with a stern look. Reaching for the side of his hat, Sam pulled out a skull print lighter. Well, maybe you should stop making bets on my head, dumbass. Do all of them have to wear those hats? Rain asked with a great deal of distaste. Just the losers, Leah scowled. Catching the remark, Sam turned, pulled a piece of paper from his pocket, and proceeded to light the end of it. Sam, Matt hissed, are you insane? No, dude, I'm a high. There's a big difference. Are you trying to get expelled, or are you just that far gone? Fiddling with the road, she brought it to his lips while Matt planted his face in both palms. Oh, please. They've been trying to expel me for years, Sam said to Leah before noticing Rain. She looks new. Did you order her off eBay or something? I bet clothes like that don't come cheap. I'm sure yours do, asshole. Sam, leave them alone, Matt elbowed him. Sorry, he mouthed in Leah's direction while Sam's attention turned toward another girl. Now that there, that's a fine piece of ass, he said as he pointed two fingers at her. Elizabeth Steinway? Matt arched a brow. Please, Sam, you don't have a snowball's chance in hell. You don't have a chance with anyone in this town unless they're as high as you are, Leah snorted. Why don't you go play with your soccer balls? They're the only kind you're ever going to get. She let the insult roll off her shoulders. You couldn't get laid even if you saved your drug money for a hooker. Why don't you give me your local street corner number and I'll take that bet. Hain! Ah, oh, shit. Throwing the butt to the floor, Sam grimaced as an intimidating older man stormed across the gym and pointed toward the bottom bench. Get your butt down here right now, mister. Ugh, busted. Stuffing his hands into his pockets, he sauntered down the steps to endure the rapid screaming that followed. Matt only watched as Sam was dragged from the gym by the arm. Sorry about that, he said to Leah. He's usually not this bad. I'm sure he's a lot worse, she spat before addressing Rain. And there's your first example of a loser. Letting it go, Matt went back to his homework. Seeing as the typical first day was generally nothing but name-calling and nosebleed seats, the majority spent the duration either reading or chatting until the bell rang. I'll see you back at home, okay? What? Ren looked surprised. It's a half day for me, Leah told her. You don't have that privilege. I'll meet you at home after practice. Just be careful, okay? Ren felt like a gazelle in a lion's cage. Math was next, and while it was not her favorite subject, she didn't have a problem with it. Taking a seat nearby, the girl Sam had made the rude comment about looked meek and ill-prepared as she realized she hadn't brought a pencil. Excuse me, she whispered in Rain's direction. Do you have an extra I can borrow? Rain held out a spare. Thanks, you're a lifesaver. Class was long and in Rain's case particularly boring. By the time that it ended, she had barely finished her work. Handing the paper to the teacher sheepishly, she bowed her head and the man said nothing. It was Elizabeth this time who met her at the door. Your pencil, she called. You can keep it. Really? Thank you. Gathering her books, she followed Red from the room. Are you new here? Is it that obvious? A little. My parents moved here from Oregon, but that was back in, like, third grade. I hardly remember it. Oh, Ren cleared her throat. I moved from Japan. My parents are in the military. It happens a lot. Japan? Wow, really? I'd love to visit sometime. That must have been quite a place to live. It was a lot different from here, Ren admitted. Well, if you need anybody to show you around... I'm a freshman, too, but I've lived here a while. You get to know the people and places. I'm Elizabeth, by the way, although everybody calls me Liz. Rain, she introduced herself. If you need help with school stuff. That's a nice name, and thanks. 
I'm really bad at math. If you think you might be able to help, I'd be forever grateful, she said before another bell rang. Oh man, I'm going to be late. Well, it was nice meeting you. I'll see you later or tomorrow then. Whichever. Frowning at the compliment, Rain found it hard to accept. In the time it took for school to let out, this guy had taken on a strange reddish hue, somewhat unnatural for four in the afternoon. Considering the odd weather Greenville had been having, nobody really paid much attention to it, or the uneasy tension that gripped the air like the calm before a deadly storm. Rain reached Leah's house as a clap of thunder broke the silence. The entire sky had turned a treacherous black, and near the edge of Brom Park, a group of little leaguers ran for cover as an odd sizzling tore through the trees. Suddenly, a loud crack pierced the air, while a bizarre scar of black energy ripped open in the middle of the park. Several birds took flight, and the void gave way as a young man stepped out. Dressed in an expensive black suit with neon red pinstripes, his hair was as black as the darkness that vanished behind him. Grinning from ear to ear, he reached down to casually adjust his sleeves while a pair of unsettling golden eyes scanned the terrain and a rapid crack of thunder echoed overhead. His amusement, however, quickly faded as the obnoxiously overabundant sound of It's a Small World suddenly began to drift from across the street. Arching a slender black brow, he turned in time to see a Mr. Frosty truck sauntering by, blasting the horrific twinkling melody as loud as mechanically possible. A few seconds later, the music was silenced by a tremendous explosion as the entire truck went up in a pyre of gasoline, flames, and melted ice cream. Clenching his fists, the disgruntled youth stormed off, mumbling something to the effect of, "'Piece of shit, you ruined my entrance!' Rain peeked outside her bedroom window at the sound of the explosion. A few blocks away, several school buses were almost thrown over as hurdles of children raced toward the windows to watch. Holy shit! Pressing his face to the glass, Sam's eyes went wide while the driver screamed at everyone to take their seats. Thankfully, the rest of the night was uneventful, and by the time dawn broke the next morning, school was in full swing. Wandering the lunchroom with a bottle of apple juice and a muffin, Sam had been dropped off a half an hour beforehand. Matt, who always got there early, was sitting at one of the many tables, skimming his math notes while Liz sat a few seats over with an apple. Noticing him alone, Sam dropped beside him, and his books were once again thrown to the floor. You know, I really wish you'd stop doing that, Matt sighed, bending to pick them up while Sam went to steal a piece of his bagel. You hear about Mr. Frosty? Matt gave him a look. Yes, I heard about it. Well, I saw it, dude. That shit went up like the 4th of July. I knew that guy was a doper. I knew it. Oh, please, Sam. It was a freak accident. Bullshit. Come on, Matt. Anybody who can sit there listening to that demented twinkling for eight hours a day has got to be packing some heavy-duty shit. Guy probably hit a bump or something and shatter his bong. Matt had to hide a laugh. Ah, see, I'm totally right. You're totally nuts is what you are. Sitting across the room with Leah and her soccer friends, the other girls were talking about the incident. Rain kept telling herself it was an accident. Maybe the ice cream man had been a closet bomber, though the more she heard, the tenser she seemed to get. I have to get some stuff from my locker, she excused herself, heading into the hall while Sam and Matt continued their conversation. Anyway, I gotta go get my shit from Rourke before class starts. Slapping a palm across the table, Sam adjusted his hat and got up. You want anything? Oh wait, I forgot, you already spent all your money making bets. What's it today, 10 o'clock again, or did you push it back to 11? Get lost, Sam, and go haunt your stairwell. Laughing at Matt's remark, he walked off with his hands in his pockets, while on the far side of the school, Rourke was standing at the bottom of a darkened stairwell, dishing out small bags of pot. Finishing his latest transaction with a grim smirk, he leafed through about $50 and stuffed it into his jeans. Man, what a haul, he chuckled, although stopped as he caught the sound of footsteps from behind. Hey, you're the local dealer, right? A dark, nasally voice snickered. Rorick's brow furrowed, and he turned to come face to face with a strange young man sporting dark hair and a pinstripe suit. What's it to you? Well, the boy began, perhaps you can help me. See, I'm looking for a fix. Oh, really? You got any money? Maybe. Well, you're a little late. All I got left is weed, some dust, and a couple of sugar cubes, but those cost extra. Pursing his lips, the teen raised a hand to his chin and thought silently, Tempting offer, but I think I'll just take... Your soul. What? With an awkward expression, Rorick's jaw dropped as the boy's eyes began to give off a vibrant yellow glow, lips peeling back to expose hundreds of elongated teeth that spread apart like the blades of a saw. Before he had the chance to scream, a blinding light was sucked from his body, turning his eyes a bleach white, and he dropped to the floor, dead as a brick. Licking his fingers one by one, his assailant laughed. His image had become a perfect replication of Rorick's, with the minor exception of his hat, which he reached down to pull off the lifeless corpse a second later. Meanwhile, Rain stood upstairs, lingering against the lockers. Ice cream trucks didn't just explode, meth heads or not. Her gut told her something was wrong, and she knew to trust the instinct. Catching an offbeat sound, her head snapped as she saw Sam bolt from the stairwell. 
Run, bitch, run! He screamed as he tore past her. A second later, Rorik followed. His eyes had pinned the boy, although before he had the chance to pursue him, he ran smack into Liz. Why don't you watch where you're... Trailing off, he stopped when he noticed the way she was holding her arm. Liz, are you okay? Rain asked. What did you do? She snapped at Rorik. Uh, she ran into me. Oh, yeah, like you were watching where you were going, Liz grumbled and began to pick up her things. Sam, of course, hadn't stopped running. Bursting into the cafeteria, he began to search for Matt, who had already taken his seat in his first class of the day. Spinning around, Sam ran headlong down the hall straight into the classroom. Matt, Matt, I gotta talk to you! He screamed, rushing over to grab him out of his seat. What the hell are you doing? Matt stammered while the rest of the class turned to watch. It's Rorik, dude! He's a fucking demon! I was down in the- Sam shook his head. He's got teeth up to here! Excuse me, the teacher snapped. Stopping briefly, Sam looked up. You're excused, he muttered and went right back to screaming at Matt. I'm telling you, dude, I saw it with my own eyes. Rorik's gone AWOL. A few seconds later, the sound of Sam's full name was heard over the loudspeaker, and once again, Matt was short ten bucks. Meanwhile, taking a seat next to Leah, Rain had finally made it to class and was on the verge of saying something when Rorik walked in. Staring at his schedule, he stopped beside a vacant table and stared around the room, only to look up as the teacher placed several jars of multicolored crayons in front of him. With a look of someone who had no idea what he was doing, he went to reach for one. What's wrong with him? Leah asked. Ren wasn't paying attention. Rorik wasn't paying attention either. Picking up a crayon, he went to peel it back. A second later, it was gone, and he began coughing and spitting hunks of badly chewed pastel. Ren looked disgusted. What the hell is wrong with you? Spitting a wad of crayon to the floor, he rubbed the drool from his face. Hey, it smelled like candy! How was I supposed to know? We've only been coloring since elementary school, Leo sighed. Well, maybe I have other things to do with my time than draw weenie baby pictures, you dumb broad. Shove that crayon where the sun don't shine, asshole, Leah said as Rain stifled her laughter. Excuse me. Turning again, he lowered the magazine and lifted a finger, although before he had the chance to say anything, the teacher walked over. Rorik Ivory, what in God's name is that? She pointed towards his reading material, which just so happened to be a playboy. How it had managed to get into the mix of school ones was forever and would always be a mystery, although Rorik's expression went from angry to confused as she snatched it away and ordered him from the room. Dean's office. Now, young man. Stifling a laugh, Leah gave a wink. See ya, she said while Ran hid her face behind her book. Getting up to leave, Rorik gave them a glare. Oh, you can count on that.